had no pity at all for any soldiers. I hope you get PTSD. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Kagan Dunlap YouTube channel. Welcome in. Everybody take a seat. We got an interesting story to talk about today. There is an individual by the name of Frogan, goes by the name of Frogan, Frogan on Twitch, and she's in some hot water for some things that she said while she was streaming recently. And it's been going viral all over Twitter. It's been going viral all over social media in general. And it was pretty hateful stuff about U.S. service members and U.S. soldiers specifically. And before we get to that part, I want to kind of talk a little bit about my personal assumptions before before I, before I try to di dive deep or anything like that. So in her Twitch profile, it says, my name is Morgan. I go by Frogan on the internet. I am a 27 year old public health expert plus advocate by day and self-proclaimed pro gamer by night. Advocate, public health expert plus advocate. So I'm not really sure what a public health expert means or plus advocate. Like if I think of public health, I think, okay, maybe this person worked as a CNA or a nurse or something like that. Oh, here's an interesting post from her Twitter saying, on August 19th of 2023, I am pregnant, naming that baby Angel because it is going to heaven. You can make your own assumptions on like what side of the fence this person's on. You know, part of me always wonders why and how people like this exist. Like what happened? What happened to this person? Where were her parents? Where were, where was her like female mentorship growing up. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the big reason why people end up like this, because this is obviously like a very problematic person, not like somebody that you can't, that can't heal, but just somebody who's gone down a, a path that would take significant amounts of work to come back from. And in my opinion, I feel like this has to do with a significant lack of mentorship specifically from like a female perspective, like lack of strong female mentorship in her life. Now, whether that has to do with, you know, if her parents were divorced or if they were together or if she never met her mother before, or maybe she went to college and like her professors indoctrinated her into believing a certain set of principles or whatever. It's tough to say. I don't know because like I think that it's probably a combination of things. You know, uh, it takes a long time for somebody to get to a place where they're posting jokes about having abortions. Like it takes a special amount of time and it takes a certain amount of, you know, you have to go down this road for a significant amount of time and be like saturated with this belief system that she's obviously a part of to get to a place where that's like funny and you think it's cute to put it put on the internet. So that's just another perspective to kind of give you an idea behind like what kind of a person uh, this individual is. And again, I'm not like being judgmental, but you know, it's pretty self evident that she was co-opted by a specific ideology to say certain things and do certain things. And like things like this, just reinforce my opinion of that. Another interesting thing is, I'll give you an example of a screenshot of an organization called Stop Antisemitism that reposted her on X, saying, Twitch, the largest streaming platform for gamers, has just chosen someone, Frogan, real name Morgan, who celebrated the 10-7 massacre as, the, as their legendary woman. This is a spit in the faces of the 1,200 plus murdered people on October 7th, countless women assaulted in the remaining kidnapped hostages is still being held in Gaza. So yeah, a lot of people are coming after this girl and I'm not going to come after her. That's not the purpose of this. I just want to discuss it. And I think it's an interesting take and we still got to watch the rest of the clip. You haven't seen everything else that she had to say. So let's go ahead and watch the rest of the clip. And then I'm going to show you the terms of service and what it actually says in the terms of service. And you can kind of make your own decision on as to like what you think should, I guess, come out of all this, you know, so let's give it a watch. I have no pity at all for any soldiers distress thank you so much i will never have any pity for any soldiers u.s military boo who i hope you get ptsd you know i i do the ones i do i the ones i'm like whatever about the u.s soldiers are the ones that like acknowledge that like what they did was wrong they didn't know well back they didn't know back then whatever you're you're a good person in my book i'm like a tom thank you so much for the 10 gifted 
the, the the U.S. military that are like, yeah, like, you know, I did this back then, but now I know it's wrong. Like, I'm changed. Like, f imperialism, f this. You don't deserve the PTSD. But like any other, m you're joining them. You're like, oh my god, I want my f Camaro. No student loans. F you. I hope you get PTSD. And I hope you get no health insurance when you get back into a America. Okay, well, that was a loaded thing to say. Um, so let's check out the terms of service here. Kind of curious what it has to say. All right, so terms of service, civility and respect, hateful content. Twitch aims to be a place where everyone can come together and shared community experiences. This vision is threatened when people experience harmful rhetoric and abuse on Twitch. Twitch does not permit behavior that is motivated by hatred, prejudice, or intolerance, including behavior that promotes or encourages discrimination, denigration, harassment, or violence based on the following protect characteristics. Race, ethnicity, color, caste, national origin, immigration status, religion, sex, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, dis disability, serious medical condition, and oh look, the last one, and veteran status. We also provide certain protections for age, which are expressly noted in the examples. It's clearly defined there in the civility and respect hateful conduct portion of their terms and conditions that Twitch does not allow harmful rhetoric and abuse on Twitch for veteran status. So I don't know, it's, it's, in, the, it's in the terms and conditions, you know, I don't know what else to say. Like it says, hey, look, you're not allowed to say hateful stuff and you're going to be respectful to people that are of a veteran status or any of those other things. And I get it because they want it to be a safe platform and they don't want a bunch of hateful, nasty stuff getting plastered all over their platform. And at the end of the day, really like, look, when it comes down to it, like there's a lot of division and polarization in the country. I get it. You know, I get it. Not everyone's going to agree with each other. There's going to be a lot of folks that believe one side of things and a lot of people that believe another side of things. And we have to find a way to get along with each other. You don't have to like each other, but you can be civil to each other. You can be respectful to each other. And personally, being a service member myself, like, does this upset me? Sure, it upsets me. I'm not going to say anything nasty about this person. That's, that's unprofessional, and that's not how I conduct myself. However, I can respectfully disagree with the way that she was conducting herself on the internet, and that's perfectly fine. And... I can also encourage other people to emulate behaviors that I put out and not to emulate that type of behavior, regardless of who they are. You know, I think there's constructive ways that we can discuss these types of things without getting nasty about it, without wishing ill will on people, without wanting harm to befall people, without wanting people to lose health insurance. Like, dude, life is hard, man. Life is hard in everywhere on the planet obviously like we have we have it really good here in america like we got it made in the shade compared to like places like you know somalia for example where there's like oftentimes not clean water to drink or water at all you know so look here's the bottom line i would fight to defend this person's right to say these things because i don't want her to get deplatformed. i don't want people to lose their ability to make money i don't want I think that some of this stuff is a little too much, like the censorship, like the, you know, like I kind of like the Wild West that, you know, X has, right? But I will defend people's right to say what they feel and say how they feel because I believe in true unadulterated freedom of speech. However, that being said, people who say stupid stuff should also be shunned for saying said stupid stuff. It should be like society could be like, hey, stop being dumb. Stop saying stupid things. You're you're free to say them, but we're going to shun you for saying dis despicable things like that. That's kind of how society works itself out. That's how a free society, an open society who can discuss ideas publicly without fearing being taken down off the internet, hashes through these things. You talk about them, and then if you say something that everyone's pretty much like repulsed by, they have the freedom to tell you that that's repulsive, and you can choose as a free-thinking human being to be like, well, I guess, do I want to keep saying these things, or do I want to change my behavior and can, you know, maybe change how I think about this stuff? Like, that's what freedom is all about. Like, the freedom to, like, discuss things and say however you feel about stuff without fear of, you know, being deplatformed or whatever. But she's going to have a lot of people coming after because there are a lot of folks that are, you know, 
viciously against that type of rhetoric. So, again, while I defend her right to say it, I disagree with it. I don't think that's the right thing to say. I don't think that's the. I don't think that's a fair way to talk about it. I don't. I definitely don't think that she obviously has a very poor opinion of the military and probably has no perspective or experience with military or or maybe she had a bad experience with a service member she dated that's that's a possibility too who knows she could have had a really bad boyfriend at one point that treated her terribly and then now she's got this really bad taste in her mouth forever because of that i don't know there's like i don't know anything about this person and that's why i'm not trying to jump to conclusions i think really when it comes down to it the best way to impact people is through community building and mentorship. Now, who's to say who the best mentor is? That's a tough one because not everyone comes from the same background. Not everyone comes from the same state. Not everyone comes from the same towns. Cities are going to have different types of people available to them than folks in towns are going to have. But building communities and having mentorship, especially when you're young during your formative years, is going to significantly impact your development as a human being, whether that be when you go off into the world and you do stuff on social media, or if you go into business, or if you go become an educator, or if you go work in law enforcement, or if you decide to join the military. And a lot of the mentorship and leadership you have as a young person is going to affect you for the rest of your life on how you make decisions and how you influence other people. And the only way to combat bad influence is with good influence. That's it. There's no other way around it. So the only way that we can fix this is by providing better examples of how to lead one's life. It all goes back to like, I believe in freedom of speech. I would defend her right to say whatever it is that she wants to say. But you have to be prepared to face reprisal if a large amount of people disagree with your opinion. 